Hi there. Uh, thanks for watching my other video. I hope uh, the whole story about uh, your picking order at the trough in the last video uh, stuck or got clearer. I'm hoping to make a little video about it with some illustrations. And to explain the whole concept, it's of course a very trivial and very uh, clear, uh, clearly uh, valid concept that you feel that you're, you have some kind of status uh, derived from your financial position. But of course, uh, it's also very important to see how that uh, how that sense is basically marketed on a day-to-day -day basis, and how people that believe in it, uh, you know, uh, just uh, like people that believe in Herbalife, will be ran ranting and raving about it, uh, in, you know, without a clear reason, but simply because they've found their social uh, structure that they can operate in, and they're very happy about their own position. I wanted to talk about something that uh, that I think is important to realize also. <laughs> Let's say in the series of psychological fallacies that people uh, uh, come into, uh, there is uh, there is so first of all uh, let me remember what the other videos were about. But one of them is the picking order. Uh, the other psychological thing is how to be successful and what success actually is. And now I'm going to talk about problems and solutions. Problems and solutions. You have problems and then you have to figure out the solution. <coughs> the big myth is that there are solutions to problems. There's many reasons why there, there is much, it's much more likely that there is no solution to a problem than that there is. And usually the bigger the problem, uh, the bigger the hope for a solution and people will look for it very frantically. Uh, three reasons why uh, why there may not be a solution to a problem. First of all, you might not have the time to find it. If you say there is a solution, then you assume that you have time to look for it. And, uh, and you might not have time. So uh, if you are stuck on the bottom of the ocean, uh, and you cannot uh, set yourself free, uh, and then there might be all kinds of tools and, and trinkets around that you might uh, use to generate oxygen or, or who knows what. But you don't have time to do that, so there's no solution. The other thing is, of course, that you know how to how to look, how to find it, uh, and that is really, you know, it's not really reasonable for you to assume that you find it. But it's a bit, little bit hope-based, so you hope that you find it, so you start looking in all kinds of ways. But still, you know, you might simply know not know the way to look for it, and you might not realize it. So uh, you might try to turn lead into gold and not realize that it's a nuclear thing that you have to really use a hell of a lot of energy to get that done and you don't really have a, a particle accelerator and a certain type of installations in your medieval uh, dungeon in which you're, or, or, or tower in which you're doing that, you're trying to do that. It's not going to work and you're just poisoning yourself with the lead. So that's problem number two and the, th and the third one, the most important one I think, is that there might not be a solution. There might simply not be a solution. So if you're stuck in a in a in a container, shipping container, somebody welded it shut and the thing is uh, sinking, uh, then uh, just give up. There's no solution to that problem for you because you don't have a welding machine, you don't have a, a cutter, you don't have nothing. If you only have yourself, then there's no solution for you. There's no way to get out of it. And uh, and it, that is really. This is really a very cold thing, I think, to to realize that in some instances in life, and in let's say in in basically behavior that people have, situation that they create, it's simply, you know, it's a dead end. It's it's gonna be like that, and it's gonna stay like that, and it's not gonna improve, or it's not gonna get worse, or it's not gonna change in the way that you want it to, no matter how hard you look for a solution. And, but <laughs> of course, there's a big, big learning, uh, or the big lesson that humans have learned in, during evolution, because of that. You know, uh, I, uh, a picture springs to mind of a dog. Uh, recently, was a picture online of a dog that stuck his head through uh, a fence and got stuck, <laughs> and he was, <laughs> and he just couldn't get his head out of the hole. Uh, and he looked so sad. 
<laughs> because he knew that like this is what you shouldn't be doing sticking your head through a hole and not knowing whether you can get it out again and I really had a lot of uh, compassion with that dog but evolutionary people have learned something and have have developed a behavior that makes that you know they can deal with that fact that there might not be a solution to your problem and that is called risk aversion that is called uh, you know conservatism basing yourself on experience listening to each other telling true stories about what really happened and what went right and what went wrong error cases or some there's some Australian guy that picks apart machines that broke down and tries to find out uh, it's called failure mode or something there's a nice term for it it's not being a fool it's not trusting in uh, technical solutions see there's a it's so deep uh, deeply basic to you hum the human mind that it really I think it really uh, requires a new human to be as dumb as most people are in accepting uh, technological optimism I personally am not a technological optimist at all I'm an extreme technological pessimist because <laughs> because even if humans invent something that is smart they are not allowing each other to use that invention usually and let's say miraculous inventions things that are amazing uh, will make people believe in magic and there is no magic you know, ma magic is just there to entertain you uh, in, a, in a very restricted life that is so extremely boring that you had to have something to entertain you in order to keep the social structure from uh, basically descending into rape and pillage and all that stuff all the time so what they what humans developed was a sense of fantasy and a sense of entertainment and a sense of uh, imagining something in a boring environment these days it is that imagination that is constantly being jogged and uh, and and and, and and, and inspired and and uh, and, uh, and driven, and it is completely useless. But it made an infinitely boring existence in, uh, let's say, in tribal savannas, and uh, of course challenging. And you could always go to war with each other, and you could all also do all kinds of other stuff with your life. But you know, at times the things were boring. You had fantasy and magic. And then basically, the technological uh, uh, um, world is constantly hijacking that same fantasy in order to make us imagine how it would be to live on Mars, which we will never do. Really, it's not going to happen. Maybe five, five, let's say in human history, uh, for what's left of it, uh, there will be, let's say, there will be five people walking on Mars, or ten, or twenty. And we're here on Earth with 8 billion people. So that's an achievement. That's really something you should strive for and you should look at. And I'm really triggered on this technological optimism again because I, I read a report about uh, the food uh, safety and security, uh, food and farming uh, between now and 2050, which uh, was completely blind to a number of issues. It did mention it. It did mention that uh, there was a crisis in food supply in the 70s and a crisis in 2008 because of sh uh, uh, high oil prices. But then it still predicts uh, food supply to basically grow more or less uh, <laughs> in a graph with different caloric regimes where the lowest caloric regime has about a thousand calories a day which is starvation diet I believe. <laughs> And they're, and they're neatly calculating what's going to happen, happen to that starvation diet. And that the star their starvation diet is going down from, from 1200 calories to 1000 calories or something. <laughs> Are you fucking insane, man? <laughs> Imagine it. I really, I'm, I'm just had a nice phone call and all kind of stuff, so I'm not going crazy. I'm just, I just, it's so, in a way, it's so sadly hilarious to see the, such a calculation and then they write well we have to be able to 
to to try and accept new technological innovations in food uh, uh, technology uh, in order to uh, make sure that we don't lose out on the higher productivity and higher yield that that might bring about <laughs> it's like you know you might not want to lose out uh, jumping off the cliff because you you will lose uh, the, the 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 true uh, riches that wait wait you at the bottom of the cliff there's a bar of gold at the bottom of the grand canyon and you can jump towards it it's a myth and then of course the bar is not real because nobody's ever going to check they're going to be too flat to check it out it's a it's a myth it's a technological optimistic myth that's being presented in order to go further in destroying the ecosystem, go further in creating animals and plants and all kinds of species that, that should not exist in order to, uh, to uh, according to this, uh, this uh, big report, uh, protect people from uh, possible diseases uh, in, in, uh, in, well, the Monsanto seeds are being sensitive to molds and other diseases and the humidity in the earth is increasing, so there will be more molds. It's a lie. And then another graph that is also deeply sad is a graph in it where it shows that the prices in food will double by 2050. So the price level of food will be 200% will 100 of uh, relative to what it is now. So doubled. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it's really, there's somebody, these people are in England, they made this report, and it's just hilarious, because we know that the cotton prices, what, what did happen to sugar? It went over six times in the last five years, that's what I heard today, 600% increase in sugar. And other commodities, of course, also uh, uh, rose tremendously, and then if the dollar goes down, then of course you can have more of that effect. But in that graph, oh, only the doubling of the food price alone, only that fact, means that the 3 billion people that were on the 1000 calories scale eh, will now have to do with 500 calories. Because they <laughs> have to, they're, they're, we assume that they're not making more money. It's a ridiculous report. And and it okay so so we, okay so the report basically says that uh, uh, because it it says well we have to move to sustainable agriculture so we have to realize that the oil is a problem and the greenhouse gases are a problem so we have to move to sustainable agriculture so we assume that they made a the graph for sustainable agriculture otherwise it is of course it is to begin with a meaningless graph but then the graph basically says that we're gonna shed at least 3 billion people on earth in the next 20 years and of course that's not going to be gradually because you know once people get hunger hungry there they stop sharing and they start fighting and it's going to be a big disaster <laughs> you only need to let you, need, you only need lack of food for about a month and you're gone so uh, so that triggered me to talk about technological optimism and a belief in solutions. And it's quite harsh to uh, to realize it, but it should it should put you in a mode of being conservative and being very very intent on making sure that whatever you believe is true. See, it doesn't work if you're a nuclear scientist or you're in a nuclear reactor and you're turning the rod down in or up in the reactor, so the reaction speeds up or down, and you say, well, is it uh, is it at 5, because that's safe, or is it at 6, where it's still uh, accelerating? And it, uh, and the gauge, the, the thing doesn't work, and it says 5 when it should be 6 or the other way around. And you go home, uh, you know, have dinner, try to turn on the light in the bed and you see a big explosion on the horizon and that's your nuclear reactor because you did it wrong well that's, that's everything in life is like that you need facts you need to be accurate you not to be a, need not to be a fool or a technological optimist if you don't have a solution then just start with the assumption that you don't have a solution but thanks for listening